As a longtime Need for Speed fan, I pride myself in calling myself a an arcade racer, or more or less a casual gamer as a whole. So, with Gran Turismo 7, why would I go to multiple different stores on release date to find out if it's in stock? Why would I wait many hours for the updates to install on a console that I haven't ever really played, that the only reason why I have is because my significant other has it? And why should you be interested in Gran Turismo 7 as well? Stay tuned. So before I get started with this video here, I want to make comment that the vast majority of you here that has found this video has not yet subscribed to my channel. So please click down over here in the bottom left to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to be informed if I ever go live or if I have new uh, posts or new videos to stay up to date. So please do that. It'd be very, very appreciated. Gran Turismo 7 is a sim racer's wet dream where it is it's got the best graphics, it's got dynamic weather, it's got a huge car list, it has many options for different uh, customization options for every single car, it has got countless events, whether it be driving license tests or missions or just general races. So even going across this main menu screen, you've got your missions, you've got your photography studios, you've got your license tests, you've got world circuits, showcases, tuning shops. You know, the cafe, the used car lot, the brand new car lot, your garage, GT Auto, or your garage where you can more or less customize cars, edit liveries. You've got your multiplayer, you've got your legend cars dealership, and then you've got sport, which is your more online daily um, missions, or again, your dailies. So the main pinnacle, or the main, the home of Gran Turismo 7, in my opinion, is with the cafe, where you can talk with various individuals, talking about um, different tasks to complete with a menu book, per se, where the most recent mission for the uh, world circuits, or just throughout the map that you'd want to complete, is getting different collections of vehicles. So in this case, um, I need to collect various different Fords, but here are some different missions from, or tasks from previous, where you have to collect Japanese compact cars, European classic compacts, uh, front wheel drive Japanese sports cars, European hot hatches, Japanese front wheel drive sports cars, so on and so forth. So it offers a very good starting place for people to dive into the game to understand, okay, there there's so much content here. How do I divide up about where I need to go and how I need to go to those different places and what's the next steps to progress in the story of just further progressing through the game. So I found the menu books with the um, Gran Turismo Cafe, an awesome place that really starts you from the bare, from square one, giving you very slow cars to begin with, and then kind of working your way up, purchasing many new cars with very limited budgets, and then starting to introduce uh, GT Auto, where you can start upgrading your cars, and then from there. But the one thing that I really do enjoy about this game that um, Forza definitely doesn't touch on is while with this game you're more focused on the sim racing side of things, it actually is a very educational game as well that describes the history of many different cars and the different um, eras that they are produced in where you're describing you know, the Mini Coopers and how there are very few European compact cars prior to the Mini Cooper and, you know, the Beetle and all the rest of that. And they started as the foundation of a revolution of very cheap, affordable, and yet sporty vehicles. So to start with, you've got your used car dealership. They do have miles on the odometer to show that they are used. And this game really introduces the feature of, you know, having... Uh, reliability and durability issues with the more mileage that you have on cars and through the GT Auto uh, upgrade shop you can actually um, purchase new parts to replace old parts and eventually kind of lower down the mileage on the odometer to make it more of a brand new car than you know when you originally purchased it. So then in Brand Central as like I was kind of referring to earlier you've got all sorts of different um, you know brands from either America or Europe or Asia and one of the best things about this game is on top of the extensive um, car list is that this is one of the few game companies 
that versus just talking with brands to you know get licensing for their vehicles Gran Turismo actually goes so far ahead and works with the brands directly and their designers to say hey if you had a completely blank piece of paper what would you want your future looking vehicles to look like so again i, I just got to show off all these other brands as well as as so cool of designs that you wouldn't have normally expected from these car brands to have these just completely outrageous machines that were created with outrageous different types of uh performance added to them on top of their wild styles it's just it's so cool what people are able to create when they have a completely blank canvas to work with. And finally, for those who have extremely deep pockets, we have the Legends Collection, where you have incredibly famous vehicles from their respective eras, and they've got price tags to show for it. So by both completing races and by completing uh, the menu books out of the cafe, you are able to receive gift vehicles. I believe you can also receive gift vehicles by completing missions and driving missions as well as you've, if you complete all of like International B, International A, Super License, um, all, all that fun stuff. So after you pick up your first car, you can do a multitude of different things. So you can you know, maintenance and serve or customize your car or edit some of your driving gear. So with the maintenance and servicing, you can wash your car to make it look a little bit more cleaner after many uh, kind of rally events where you get a lot of dirt cluttered up and whatnot. Uh, you can edit you know, some oil change to increase the performance of your vehicle. You can have an engine overhaul where really, you know, this is kind of the main part here between the engine overhaul and the restore the rigidity where you can reduce the mileage on the odometer to have a more reliable newer car per se. And then of course you can add the modification of the wide body, which in my opinion is probably one of my most favorite animations in any video game ever. Love it. So furthermore, with GT Auto, um, some of the upgrades that you can get are kind of the more obvious ones where you can change the wheels of your vehicle. You can edit the paint color, you know, some additional customization of parts, whether it be uh, front bumper, side skirts, rear diffusers, or spoilers, and of course, uh, livery editors. And then finally with GT Auto, you know, the driving gear here where you're able to adjust the livery of both your helmet and your racing suit where you can create awesome looking helmets like this. So of course you've got your tuning shop where kind of like Forza you've got your basic things that you can change whether it be the exhaust systems or the mufflers, you know, weight reduction, adding different suspensions, uh, having different types of tires. And the more you go up from sports to club to semi-racing to racing to the extreme, the more uh, racing specific parts are available. So then when you finally do finalize your car and you have it to the spec that you want, of course you can start racing it in the world circuits where you have a large selection, maybe not as much as maybe some other games per se, where there's 10 different tracks based in America, 15 in Europe, and 9 in Asia for a total of about 34 courses. Each course has its own different variation of you can do forward or reverse, or there might be, like for example, the Nürburgring, you can have the GP circuit or the full ring itself. And then of course you can choose different types of championships that you can participate in as well. So playing on like, you know, the Tokyo freeway here, it's always been a really nice pleasure to be able to play, you know, tracks of this kind of nature in previous games, just from the standpoint that it is very different than, you know, just for instance, like a set of Corsa where uh, Compensione specifically, where all you have is, for example, like your main circuits that you play on, whether it be the Nürburgring Grand Prix or Spa. And of course, those tracks are in this game as well. But playing on this track or, you know, Deep Forest are definitely really nice uh, breath of fresh air where you add some very exclusive tracks that you don't normally see anywhere else apart from in this game. And while we're here in the world circuits here, talking about the racing itself, as you can tell, the graphics are absolutely phenomenal. On the PlayStation 4, it does use the traditional rasterization uh, graphic method. 
but when you get into uh, PlayStation 5, it does offer the unique ray tracing option where somehow, some way, the graphics look even better than this. And my driving is not the best here. And one thing that Gran Turismo has just absolutely nailed with on every single iteration is its sound design. It is absolutely realistic. You never question if it was augmented, you know, or it was, for instance, um, using computer samples and then adjusting the EQ or having really weird samples that don't match with cars. I mean, the, the amount of level of detail that is put into both the graphic level and the audio detail is just absolutely incredible. And every car also has an interior view, which is probably one of my most favorite views, as it gives a very realistic perspective of where you're driving. It gives you a very good angle of you know being able to view where the racing line is and where your braking points are and the apexes, and then being able to look around the interior of the car as well as you're drifting and crashing into the barrier. And of course, we get to kind of my two sets of events that I have a huge love-hate relationship with. You don't see this absolutely anywhere else in really any other racing game where you have both the missions and the license tests, and they both work identically, where you have various different events that you're supposed to complete um, in very specified, very competitive and difficult to reach times. So this game really doesn't have any difficulty settings, which is definitely very different from your normal casual racers. The AI difficulty will always be the same, and that is especially true with the license tests. And as difficult as it is to try to get gold trophies or gold medals on every single different event that both the missions and the license tests have, versus being able to cheap out, change the difficulty down, and then say, well, I got gold medal and I had to be on easy mode. If you get gold medal, it means that you have achieved something. So being able to walk up to people to say that you got gold medals in all the license uh, license tests in Gran Turismo 7 is a huge bragging right, because again, you can't change the difficulty and you have to beat the time listed. So with that being said, here's a montage of me attempting to rebeat my uh, gold medal time, or to see, to see at least that I can beat gold medal once again with the International A license Eight. That was a horrible exit. <sighs> oh, I'm gaining on it. Oh, come on. Oh, that is surprisingly close. Oh, no, come on. Huh, I'm in. I think I might. No. Ah. Uh. This is not the right line. Come on. Ugh. No. And for all intents and purposes, uh, missions is pretty much identical to the license tests where they give absolutely outrageous tasks to complete in very little time that is not even possible. Oh, get out of the way. Come on. How am I supposed to get a good time if I don't have any fuel? This is insane. Uh. And one of the other really cool things is being able to have a compatible wheel support. And uh, I gotta be honest, it, my wheel isn't set up for it at all right now. It's, um, I don't have the... I was supposed to get the Fanatic GT Pro DD or DD GT DD Pro by now, and uh, it turned out that it wasn't. I didn't get it in time for the video to be sent out, so I'll definitely be making a follow up video for um, when I do get it. But I hear from people that actually do have it set up that it's a really good playing experience and it's much better than doing it on the controller. And of course, uh, with multiplayer, the introduction of, or at least the continuation of the split screen is still here. 
uh, like you've seen in previous uh, Gran Turismo games. So it's it's really nice to be able to have this because once the last time you've seen a AAA racing game offer split screen support. I mean, the last one that I've seen is probably what Crash Team Racing. One of the other things I definitely also want to uh, point out as well is Music Rally, a really fun game mode, um, only single player based from what I can tell, where all you have to do is you just drive around, you get to pass vehicles, and you get to listen to some great music, and you just got to make sure that you um, hit the checkpoints in time, and that you finish the race before the sun ends, which I always thought was a really cool feature. So with that all being said, I want to wrap back to my very original question that I posed. Uh, why, as someone who considers himself as a casual arcade racer, um, who has played all sorts of Need for Speeds, suddenly jump into Gran Turismo? So one of the big things is that uh, the hype, you know, the hype was insane about release because it was one of the first PlayStation 5 exclusive games that did also have backwards compatibility with PlayStation 4. Of course, there's, you know, Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales, and there's a couple other games in there as well. But this was the first racing game for PlayStation 5, which has been, you know, in talks for years. Everybody's been speculating and just been really excited to see what Gran Turismo 7 would look like. And I think that uh, Polyphony Studios had done absolutely everything that they could have done and more and created such an incredible game. One of the big things that mainly isn't really talked about recently is the level of polish of a game. I loved playing Forza Horizon 5 on release, and I actually pre-ordered it, but I found very quickly that the game was not finished, and even to this day, five months after release, it's still not to a level that I would consider really finished. With Gran Turismo 7 coming out of Polyphony Studios from Japan, um, both Sony and Nintendo, in my opinion, have a huge extensive track record of bringing polished games on release where it's 98 to 99% complete and then you've got the additional 1% of you know additional uh, DLC or additional polish to be added through patches and improvements after launch again 99% there so there are very little bugs very few issues and when there are they're immediately fixed and they don't make a big deal about, oh, we've we've come and saved your gaming experience. No, they just do it because that's the that's the baseline requirement. If there's an issue with the game, it's fixed. That's done. So all in all, even as a casual arcade racer myself, um, if you do have a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, PlayStation 4 Slim, or PlayStation 5, if any of them are collecting dust and you're kind of looking for a new game to play, I cannot recommend Gran Turismo 7 enough. It is a absolutely perfect game. Again, 10 out of 10 in my book. I would, I've already spent way too many hours in this game, and I can't tell you how excited I am to be spending some more time playing Gran Turismo 7. So again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a lot more videos, uh, kind of unique video essays, much like this coming up in the future. So if you enjoyed this, please, again, you know, uh, comment down below what other future games you'd like me to review or discuss or kind of providing, again, another kind of video essay type content. So again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.